everybody. All right, let me know if you are here and if you can hear me and tell me where you're joining me from. Today, you'll notice I'm wearing pajamas. It has been one of those days. This morning was my kids' um, Christmas parties and one of them was a pajama party and she wanted us to wear our matching pajamas, which is totally cute. So of course I did and of course, I was the only mom <laughs> dressed up in pajamas, um, but, and then I attempted to curl my hair today now that it's getting longer and I feel like I just basically uh, have epic bed head. That's what it looks like. It just looks like my bed head is awesome and it just goes with the whole theme of wearing my pajamas. So there's that. Uh, we're going live today as an odd time because of the Christmas parties that I had. Uh, so thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me a little bit late. And today we're making a really, really fun holiday treat and that is uh, homemade toffee. Now, uh, you can't just make homemade toffee because everybody makes homemade toffee, right? So I'm gonna show you three different ways to make it. I'm gonna show you uh, one recipe how I make it flat, thick, and then the best one, homemade almond roca in these rods. This is so a copycat almond roca that you're gonna love and it's really not that hard. I'm gonna answer all of your candy making questions that I know and that I can't answer. So we are, um, I just have to send this one thing and then I'll be ready to go. Okay, inner circle. What? Hi. Uh, Kiara's here. Aaron's here. Welcome, welcome. It's so good to see you. And I'm trying to figure out how to... There we go. Got it. So I can see the comments. That's always the fun part, right? I want to make sure that I can respond to any of the questions that you guys have. All right. Blah, blah, blah. It always takes a couple seconds more than you think, right? And, all right, comments are up. Hello, everybody. Patricia, good morning. It's good to see you. It's afternoon for me. Uh, Kazuman, Karen, uh, it's so good to see you. Jen, hi, from Kansas City. Uh, cute Christmas PJs. Thank you so much, Karen. Uh, Brian, you like the hair. Thank you. I'm actually going to my hairdressers as soon as I'm done with this live stream, so tell me in the comments what color I should do. I change my color every six weeks. It's been this kind of pinky for a while now and uh, changing my color. So let me know what you think. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad that you like it. Okay, let's, now that everything's working, uh, let's not waste any time and let's get started. Uh, Aaron, nothing's happened. You are joining right at the beginning, so you haven't missed anything. Love some love from some flowers. Hi, it's good to see you. See you. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Uh, hello from Greece. Oh, I that is like one of the top two places on my to travel to. In fact, in April. All right, you guys. In April, I'm going to take a big trip. I want to do a couple local cooking schools, and I'm trying to decide if I should go to Greece first. Italy first or if there's another suggestion that I'm not considering because you know Italy it'd be great to uh, take my homemade pasta skills to the next level and then of course Greece it's just gorgeous and I've always wanted to go uh, but I kind of want to mix a little bit of work by taking some cooking classes and really getting better at my international cuisines as well as a little bit of vacation and break and loveliness so I'd love to hear your guys' suggestion. So toffee. This tends to scare a lot of people because you use the same recipe one day and it works great. And then you use the recipe the next day and it totally fails. We always had a joke growing up that the first batch of toffee was the throwaway toffee and that somehow it like got everything going and the second batch of toffee was always perfect and we could never figure it out. So as an adult, once I got into all this baking and cooking from scratch, one of the things I was the most interested in is figuring out toffee and candy making. So a lot of recipes say go to this temperature. Now I am definitely, oh, there it is. I am definitely pro thermometer. I know a lot of recipes out there like make it without a thermometer and that's awesome. But honestly, you will get so much better consistent results with a thermometer. So I'm heavy, heavy, heavy component, you know, proponent, yay, go thermometers. Um, some recipes will say bring it to a boil and boil for eight minutes. Some recipes will say um, boil until it starts to smoke. Some recipes will simply go by the color, and that's just a lot of inconsistencies. Uh, so that's why I'm pro thermometer. But the thing that you need to know about thermometers is, depending on where you live, you're gonna have very different results. So water boils at, I totally forget what, because I'm having a brain fart right now, uh, but you can Google it. 
Somebody tell me what water, Google it and tell me what water, uh, what water boils at. Anyway, when you bring your, what you want to do is bring your water to a boil wherever you live, if you know you're not sea level, and uh, take note of where it boils at. Now for me, I'm way, way, way high up in the mountains, and so water actually boils 20 degrees lower than it does at sea level. And that affects any recipe that you need to use the thermometer for. So we're going for a hard crack for candy making, and that's 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, so I don't want to hit 300 degrees Fahrenheit. If I boiled this candy all the way up to that, it would always be burnt and nasty. So I only want to go to um, 280. So it's really important to know where you live, and that makes a huge difference. The other thing is, I finally got a big girl pan set, stainless steel, and I'm like, ooh, I'm fancy like a real chef now. Um, and I hate making candy in them. Maybe I'm doing something totally wrong, but I have found that my nasty old 17-year-old, uh, you know, non-stick pan works way better for candy making than my stainless steel. So if you're having problems with something burning, I would say try not to use stainless steel. If it's all you have, uh, most recipes say don't stir. That's a big fat lie when it comes to stainless steel. Make sure that you're constantly stirring. So did I give you guys enough knowledge in a little amount of time all about candy making and toffee making? Uh, I'm gonna get started with this so that we actually can get through the recipe. So uh, I'm gonna look through some questions really fast. 212, thank you, inner sparkle. Water boils at 212 degrees, mine boiled at 19 degrees less, so I round up to 20 because I'm like that. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, so that's what you want to do is wherever, whatever boil, whatever water temperature boils at for your temperature, you know, minus it, figure that out because most, I would say 95% of recipes, especially professional recipes, are all written for sea level. Now, some bloggers will write recipes based on their own altitude because that's how they cook and that's what they know. Um, so it's also kind of good to know if you're looking at recipes online, like my blog or somebody else's blog, to know what their altitude is at. And if a recipe is failing for you, it could be something as simple as the temperature just needing to be adjusted for where you live. So this recipe could not be any simpler. I grew up making this recipe all the time. One cup of sugar, one cup of butter melted, mix in one cup of almonds, pour it out, add one cup of chocolate, let it melt. Easy peasy, one cup, one cup, one cup, one cup, one cup. It's like pound cake. All the measurements are exactly the same. But over the last, um, over the last uh, couple months, I've been getting a lot of comments about corn syrup in a lot of my recipes. People have had questions about it. Um, and they're like, oh, can you make this recipe without corn syrup? I'm like, why would they want me to make it without corn syrup? So I started doing a little bit of research and uh, a lot of people are really scared and concerned about high fructose corn syrup that's in a lot of foods and is, you know, causing problems or whatever. Uh, I, I really don't pay attention <laughs> but to a lot of that stuff because food trends and fads come and go and facts are always changing. Anyway, so I just kind of eat what I love and go from there. So corn syrup, the stuff that you get at the store, light corn syrup, is not the same thing as the high fructose corn syrup that everybody's freaked out about. Um, and so the reason that you want to use corn syrup in recipes, especially something like candy making, is it actually keeps it uh, from crystallizing. So I now use it in my caramel sauce and my hot fudge chest, and I started using it in this toffee recipe, and I've had so much better results of never getting that random uh, crystallized batch than I used to. So I'm a huge fan of that. Um, let's switch over to another view. So I'm starting to melt my butter. Uh, for a while there, when I lived in Arizona, I used all frozen butter, and there's our cup of sugar, and I swear that it always worked. Well, it turns out, uh, <laughs> it turns out that the dry air of Arizona and the fact that there was never any storms was perfect for candy making. So it wasn't, I didn't like find the perfect trick by using frozen butter. It was just the joys of where I live. Candy making in Arizona is freaking awesome. Uh, in Texas, where we had a lot of humidity, it was a little bit trickier. Could be done, a little trickier. And then here in Utah, where we tend to have random snowstorms, it's really a pain. So the other thing that you want to be aware of when it comes to candy making is the barometer pressure. Uh, so if, you're a, if you look at the weather and it's about to storm, it's a terrible time for candy making. When the barometer starts to change, um, it will really affect that. So try to pick a day where nothing's changing in your weather. All right, so we are gonna let this melt and I'm gonna try to catch up on questions and comments now. Um, hello, Kiara. Uh, hey, Sarah's Baking Addiction, it's nice to see you. Thank you for your help. 
Uh, Seth, you are now an expert. You're welcome. Who didn't want to know all of this about toffee? I, you guys, you know you come to me not just for the recipe, but for the knowledge. Because for me, it's really about why a recipe works or why it doesn't work um, and how to fix it and change it and personalize it. That's what I'm all about. So I hope you guys enjoy all of my crazy geeked out knowledge. Uh, Spira, you like my hairstyle today. Thank you. I was, I oh, honestly, I prefer my hair really short, but I want to have more fun with color. And so I'm growing it out, kind of driving me batty. So I wanted to try something different. So thank you. I'm glad that you like it. Uh, hello, uh, Christian, you're out of school. Happy holidays, right? That's a great place to be. Uh, Flyboy, separation problems. That's a great question. You know, the corn syrup can really help with that too. I only have the separation problems of the butter and sugar separating um, on days where it's about to storm. That's really what the barometer does for me at my altitude. So if it starts to separate, I'm like, oh, it must be about to storm. I didn't realize it. Um, I find that if I go from letting it boil on its own to constantly stirring and really trying to keep that incorporated and then pull it out right at the right temperature and pour it out, I'll still get pools of the butter that separates as it, as it uh, flattens out and spreads, but I found that I can at least save the toffee. I just take a paper towel and I sop up all the extra butter. Um, and usually it's still edible. I've only had like one time where it just was too much and I tossed the batch. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, Sarah's Baking Addiction, you love the interesting facts. Thank you, I'm so glad. Hey baby girl, how was your last, last day of school? It was nice. Okay, I'm talking to everybody, so. Uh, I'm trying to catch up over here. Karen, why can't you see the other comments? I don't know. Oh, thanks Seth. Um, Karen, I, I don't know, I can see the other comments. Well, I could, now my phone's decided not to work because I dropped it. Okay, I'm on like my third phone. It's a good thing I have the phone insurance plan. So if anybody has any recommendations for a good case that I can personalize with my branding, let me know. Cause <laughs> I like the branded phone case, but I keep dropping my phone. Uh, Carolee, how cool is it that your camera can switch like you did? What are you using? Ah, oh, Carolee. See Seth, who's also commenting? He's my guy and he set me all up. Check this out. Not only do I have the top angle, but I got the side angle too. And now, we're gonna add the corn syrup, the blessed corn syrup that is amazing for candy making and I highly, highly, highly recommend. But it is optional. You can totally make this recipe without it if it freaks you out. So now we're just waiting for this to come to a boil. There it goes. Oh man, perfect timing. All right, add the candy thermometer. Um, so yeah, so Lynn. You totally need to make candy, and hello, I haven't seen you in so long, I miss you, it's good to see you. Karen, no, this isn't frozen butter, but I just, I thought that, like, I found the magic solution, like, eight years ago, and it worked every single time, turns out it was just where I lived. Uh, Carolee, you're so cute, I'm glad you like my hair. Um, cast iron, Karen, I have not tried cast iron to make candy because all my cast iron is wide and flat, but that's a really good question. Um, I did notice that the last time I made one of my recipes in cast iron that I usually make in, um, in my non-stick pans, it did definitely overcook a little bit, So, um, but totally worth giving it a shot. I would probably just make sure that you don't let it stand and boil the way you would and that I do with um, non-stick pans. Uh, in cast iron, I would probably stir more often like I do with the stainless steels. You definitely don't want burnt candy. Nope, you don't, Lynn. Um. <laughs> hey, uh, add additional color and go with blonde for New Year's. Actually, I've my skin tone is terrible with blonde. That is the one color you will probably never, ever, ever see on me. Um. Oh, Lynn, I'm so happy that you finally caught me live too. Hello from Tennessee. Fuchsia hair, please. That is a maybe. Um, I was thinking green for Christmas. All right, so now that this is starting to boil, just like any other candy making, you wanna make sure that you're not constantly scraping those sides down. We don't wanna get crusties in here, so I'm gonna let it just boil on its own for a minute. Again, if you're using stainless steel or cast iron, I would continue to stir this for sure. Um, all right. Seth, if you think of any solutions for my audio popping on YouTube, let me know. 
uh, with a dairy allergy, could you use vegan butter instead? You know what? Um, small pebble uncovered. I don't know the answer to that. You totally stunned me. I will have to do some research on that. Um, I haven't. I haven't ever tried to do candy making without anything but butter, but I'm, I'll totally look into that and see if I can come up with an answer for you. Um, Sarah, you're in Bryan, Alabama. Roll Tide. Ah, uh, Christian, blue and red for New Year's. Good suggestion. Uh, can you replace the corn syrup with anything? Sarah's baking addiction. You just don't have to use it. It's totally optional. I recommend it because it keeps uh, keeps things shiny. It keeps things well incorporated. It keeps the sugar from uh, it keeps it from getting grainy and crystallized. Um, I I cannot sing enough praise about corn syrup in candy making. It's like the magic touch. Seriously, magic touch. Um, uh, um, okay, I'm gonna try to say it. Meher, meherib, meher, meherib. Oh my word! I have not had enough sleep to try to pronounce names. I'm so sorry. Mehebran, send us decline. My mom's trying to call me. Hello, uh, <laughs> mom. You should be watching this, not calling me. Um, Hello from Mehebran, please. You want to hear the word from my mouse. Hopefully I got it right and I didn't totally butcher your name. Uh, keeping the butter from separate, out of school separate. Okay, I think I'm caught up and it's, that's a good thing because we are really looking um, good on this. So I'm gonna switch over to this. Maybe, there we go. All right, so now we're starting to get some color going in there. Uh, now, technically, a lot of candy makers say that you shouldn't stir it until it hits the right temperature, but we are only about four degrees away. No, oh, sorry. We're like, we're way far away still. <laughs> I was reading my thermometer wrong. I was looking at softball instead of soft crack. All right, so, uh, but I like to stir it just because I have had burnt batches. So even though they say not to, I do. I like to keep the color even. Now we're getting that little bit of gold going in here. So this is, uh, we're hitting softball stage now. So this is where if you were making caramel, you would pull it off the heat and uh, let it set for a little bit and then add some whipping cream. You'd have a uh, caramel, easy peasy. Caramel is awesome. Uh, your name is Ashley too, Inner Sprinkle. It's nice to meet you and you're a baker, hello. Uh, Maker Brand, you're writing me from Baku. Welcome, welcome. What time is it there? All right, so. Is anybody else fully in pajamas today or is it just me? I will say I did like, you know, shower and all that stuff and then put the pajamas on for the party, but it's the holidays, what are you gonna do? And I'm getting some smoke. So uh, one of my friends swears by, um, in her toffee recipe, get the breeze going in there, get that smoke away from the camera. Uh, she swears by, oh, look at this color. Uh, by, you can tell if your toffee's done by when it's smoking, but, I find that it smokes way, way, way before it hits the right temperature, so I don't trust that. Uh, for those of you asking, I heat this on medium high. You can go all the way high, but you have to watch it really closely. So we are at, see if you can read the thermometer. Um, not quite. Get a little closer maybe. So we're trying to go to right, oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Well, look at the, oh, so much smoke. Look at this beautiful color. And we hit the right temperature. So, first thing that you wanna do is cool it down. So I'm gonna take the, my water and water the outside of the pan. If you keep a big bowl of water near you, you can just add your pot right to that. But I find that sometimes I like, if I'm using a glass bowl, totally broke it once. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, so, but, so I just run water right outside the edge of the pan for just a couple seconds. And look at this beautiful color. Now we're gonna add our cup of almonds. And you wanna work quickly at this point, especially since we uh, cooled it down so fast. If you are scared, to put water on the outside of your pan, and uh, then I would pull it off the heat a little bit early, like three degrees early, uh, and stir in the almonds then. All right. Woo! Ah, oh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> so this is when uh, you have a couple different options. 
You can pour it out, you can pour it into a deep container, or you can use silicone molds. And that is how we're going to get our tube shape. So these are the same ones that I used in my caramel video, if you have watched those. So, and we want to work quickly because because I ran that water over it, it's already starting to cool. So I'll pour some in there, pour some in here, and pour some in here. Okay. And then I'm going to just spread and try to get it in all of these crevices really good. You don't want to touch it though because it will burn. It's hot, which is why I used my little uh, pastry cutter to kind of push everything in place. I, uh, the first time I did this, I didn't work fast enough and I ended up with some pretty misshapen uh, rods. But, um, so it does take a little bit of practice. But now I can make a double batch and uh, get that all spread in time. So if you are nervous, definitely make at least just a single batch, if not like a half batch, the first time that you try these rods. So I got these silicone molds at, uh, oh, sorry, you can't even see. Oh, sorry about that, uh, at Ikea. And I love them. All right, let's see about using this one instead. So you can try to spread it with your spatula, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to keep, I'm not keeping up with comments right now because I'm trying to just get this done, but I will catch up on comments as soon as I get this spread. So go ahead and ask questions and just give me a minute to get to them. Um, Cause this is already cooling. Oh. And you wanna make sure that you separate between because we definitely want nice, clean rods. Okay, whoop, a little extra. And this, for me, this batch made um, two and a half of these forms, these molds that I have. There's a couple different shapes of molds you can get. So uh, this is just the ones from, uh, and actually I don't know that these are the Ikea ones. These might have been from Amazon, um, but Ikea has some similar ones. You can just pour it out really thick, and then while it's still soft but somewhat firm, cut them, which is how we're gonna get these uh, long rods shorter, but you could do it for everything. It would just be a little bit more of a pain. Oh, look how it's already getting kinda hard. Mm, there we go. The last rod's always the messiest. <laughs> I'm trying to get the last of everything over. All right, and the last rod's usually not quite a full one. I just try to keep it as thick as possible. Come on. Oh, my word, totally stuck. There we go. Woo! Okay. Ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. That was supposed to be epic because I was gonna switch over, but I didn't want to switch. So there we go. We're gonna let these cool. I timed them, uh, and I found that 15 minutes is the perfect amount of time for them to still be pliable enough to cut. Um, but also be firm enough that they hold and maintain their shape. So I'm gonna set these aside. Let's kind of do a little bit of cleaning and then I'm gonna show you some of the other, uh, other options that you have. And clean up a little bit. The best part about sugar is that it cleans up really well uh, with just a little bit of hot water. Okay. Uh, questions. When's the next chat going to be? I'm not sure when I'm going to do this again. I was going to try to do it Saturday night and make something like Divinity, uh, but it just kind of depends on how crazy busy the holidays are. But definitely next Wednesday, um, I'll come on and do something. Uh, you love Amazon. You almost bought some mixing bowls today. You know, lover of sunflowers. I don't even want to tell you how much I spent on Amazon yesterday. <laughs> oh my word. I... I probably shop on Amazon at least five times a week. I have five kids. I don't want to go to the store. I just want to get it shipped to my house, right? Um, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to block some people. Uh, are you a chef? Yes, I am. Totally self-taught. Great question. Okay. Catch up really fast. Do any ever add anything else like crushed pretzels? 
I don't, I just am making almond toffee, but the best part about toffee is that you can. You can add any other nuts. My mom really likes cashew toffee, I've made that before. And of course you can totally do pretzels. Super easy. Janice, birthday buddy. Hi, I miss you, it's so good to see you. You never thought about using molds for candy. I know, right. The biggest problem is the candy starts to set so fast, you really can't do big batches and you have to be careful not to burn yourself as well. The last one's for sample eating, always. June, hello, it's good to see you. A uh, fabulously educational video. Kara Lee, you make me blush. Thank you. Uh, corn syrup is a food service. Yes. Jen, you are right. Hello from British Columbia. Hello. Uh, Jacqueline, look at Jen's comment. She totally answered the question about what is corn syrup. Uh, you make your with brown sugar. Yes, brown sugar is the difference between butterscotch and caramel is brown sugar versus white sugar. Uh, and so toffee works with both sugars as well. I like to also do a mix sometimes. This classic one is just white sugar, but sometimes I do half and half, sometimes I do brown. Uh, brown brings a different warmth that I really like to the flavors. Um, yes, Seth, Carolee, Carolee, Seth, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, and Carolee, I'll be teaching at uh, everything food conference in April and I'll be showing all about the setup and how it works and stuff like that so uh, Ashley should the candy thermometer touch the bottom of the pan or should it suspend in the candy uh, my thermometer let's see if you can see this um, so my thermometer then it's totally messy now but as you can see it sets up and then it has this space that keeps it from touching the bottom exactly. So I would avoid touching the bottom of the pan. If you're using those glass ones, suspend it, but it doesn't need to be suspended by much. See, that's really like a quarter of an inch. That's all you really need. And if it touches, it's not the end of the world, but you will get better results um, by not having a touch. Okay, so caught up on questions. This, this is how I grew up making coffee. Um, and it was just, you just pour it straight onto some parchment paper or silpat mat. And then once it's poured, you just add some chocolate chips and then you let the chocolate chips melt. So you spread them and you add it. And this is just a thin, um, thin toffee. This is how I grew up making toffee all the time. Can you see that okay? Nice, thin, uh, super easy to make. Um, but we always loved uh, almond roca growing up and that's a thicker toffee. Mm, so good. So, a couple of years ago, I switched over to doing it like this. I usually make a double batch and I make it in a nine by 13 pan, but this is a single batch and this is in an eight by eight pan. I line it with parchment paper, pour it in. I only do half a cup of chocolate on top. And then I flip it over like this. And we're going to melt some chocolate. I love my melt chocolate. Anyway, so this creates a pretty thick slab of toffee, which is a lot closer to almond roca. And um, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and so we always used to go to the beach around the holidays and we'd always get a big slab of toffee from a local candy making store. So this is reminiscent of that for me. So I really enjoy it, but it still wasn't almond roca and thus starting to use uh, these instead. So we're melting some chocolate and I will show you how I finish off this. Oh, screaming going on. Hey, hey, Scarlett. Scarlett, I'm filming, sweetheart. Notice how I didn't ask what was wrong. I just said I'm filming. Be quiet. <laughs> uh, so, best. the only thing I use on microwave for is to soften butter, melt butter, soften cream cheese, melt chocolate. I'm not a big fan of baking or cooking in your microwave but I do love my, my melt chocolate button. Okay, um, uh, pretty, yes, you're so welcome. Hi buddy, it's nice to see you. Butterscotch is brown sugar, yes, and caramel is white sugar. Um, Almond roco is your grandpa's favorite. Adrian, it's my mom's favorite, and that's one of the reasons I always try to really recreate my family's favorites. Um, the, re the whole reason that I make a lot of recipes is because it's somebody's favorite, and they've asked me to figure it out. Uh, I make the homemade peeps because it's one of my favorites. Homemade eggnog, same reason. Homemade chocolate taco because they're my kids' favorites. Um, I made the liege waffle recipe because it's my dad's favorite. So most recipes on my site are usually coming from somebody in my family and one of my loved ones saying, hey, can you figure out how to make this? So my dad's challenged me and he's asked me to figure out how to make um, 
Uh, Barbara Baker, it's nice to see you. Uh, you can continue watching my videos by just uh, liking my page and then you'll get notifications that Ash is going to go live next week and then you just click notify me and it'll let you know when I go live. I'm glad that you like the videos enough to ask. <laughs> Hello from Denmark, hi. Um, anyway, I was answering a question or I was totally rambling about something. Um, anyway, so yeah, most recipes are just from somebody requesting that if you're, oh, my dad's challenged, blah, oh my word, my brain, just holidays, right? He's challenged me to make homemade licorice. So I'm working on that one. I think I have the recipe down. It's about extruding it. That's the pain that I'm having. So if anybody has some tips for extruding licorice, let me know. <laughs> um, hello from El Salvador Juan. It's nice to see you. Toy talkers making you hungry. There's always food in my house. Nobody ever goes hungry here. Uh, beefy boy, by the way, there's some cracking in the audio. Yes, I know there's some cracking in the YouTube audio. I can't quite figure it out why. Gonna try it. We're working on it. Hopefully it's not totally ruining your experience. Too bad. I do know about it. Just don't quite know how to fix it. Um, good night, everyone. It was nice to see you. Okay, chocolate. So when your toffee's warm and you've just poured it out, you can actually just put chocolate straight onto the toffee and the heat of the toffee. I, I usually wait until it's set for about 15 minutes just so it doesn't get indents. But after 15 minutes, it's still warm enough. You can put the chocolate over the top and it will self melt and then you can spread it out. But for this big block of toffee, it's already cooled. And so I've just pre-melted it. And um, my mom always liked to use Hershey bars. Hershey bars are her favorite. And so that's what she likes to use on top. Uh, but I like chocolate that melts a little bit better and smoother. So I'm using a higher quality chocolate. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to stir it until it's completely melted because I'm a total space cadet today. You guys will have to forgive me. It will still taste amazing and that's the important part. So finish up this block and then you just let the chocolate set and you break it into nice, big, thick toffee pieces. So that's about a half cup on each side if you do the thicker block versus the one cup that I put on top of the longer, flatter version. And then I have some finely chopped almonds. You just add to the top and then that is done. All right, now we're gonna melt some more chocolate and make the, um, make the actual almond brocas. So I made a bunch yesterday to show you. Add some more crushed stuff that. Alright. So uh, I made all of these yesterday so you can see just how much like almondroca they really look like. They're awesome. So I'll break one in part for you if I have to, right? Oh. Boom, oh, pain. I have to eat sugar. Oh, there you go. Come on, focus. Mm, and focus. There we go. So you can see it's totally almondroca inside. It's not quite the perfect like rectangular square that they are. It has that rounded side to it because of the molds, but pretty darn close. And it tastes amazing. So all really matters, right? Mmm. <laughs> so good. So I keep testing these finished ones right here by just sticking a fingernail in them. And right now they're still a little squishy, um, but they're getting there. So another couple minutes and we can cut those. So what I did is the rods look like that and I just cut them into thirds. You can always cut them into fourths too, but I found that a uh, third was a really good uh, ratio for me. Oh, Kalisha, hi, I'm so glad that your two-year-old is giving me hearts. A pasta extruder, Erin, I totally, totally thought about that. Uh, Karen, you like Ghirardelli's? Buddy, milk or semi-sweet? Totally depends. For my mom, I make milk because that's her favorite. For myself, I do semi-sweet or dark because that's what I prefer. Um, Ashley, can you repeat the ingredients? Uh, yes, it's a cup of everything. Uh, cup of butter, cup of sugar, cup of almonds, cup of chocolate and optionally um, two tablespoons of corn syrup. And this will be in my blog post with all the directions written out so that you don't have to necessarily rewatch this video because the lives I know are really long. I do already have a toffee recipe up on my blog, but I will make a new one 
talking about the techniques of making the actual almond roca shapes. Uh, Lindsay, hi, good to see you. All right, so caught up there. Sarah's Baking Addiction, what brand of chocolate do you use? Um, this one is Guitar. So this is Guitar and Semi Sweet that I'm using today. Uh, I can use a lot of different brands. I have uh, 64 pounds of chocolate in my house at pretty much any given time. So, so I have a lot to choose from. All right. Now we're going to, so the chocolate is out. Uh, if you uh, don't have a melt chocolate button on your microwave, I recommend using a double broiler. I feel like melting the chocolate slowly over a double broiler gives you better results um, than, uh, than playing, you know, roulette with the microwave and sometimes burning your chocolate, but you can totally microwave it. It's just, just don't burn it. That's all you need to worry about. All right, so totally melted. So we have, um, so I have the chocolate. I have a bunch of almonds that I've chopped up and I have a fork. So I'm gonna take one of the pieces that I cut and dip it in there and pull it out. Now, if you have a special candy making fork, you can use that too, but I just put this on a regular fork. Oh, <laughs> I didn't change camera angles. You guys are looking at me like I'm a total dork. Cause I am. All right, so <laughs> chocolate, <laughs> toffee. So I poured one in, oh my word, I'm such a dork. I'm gonna shake this off without shaking it off the fork. Did someone say hey, almond roca? You're not even in the game. <laughs> Look who came to visit. <laughs> my friend Jill. Oh. Yeah. Try some. Tell me what you think. Okay. I totally oh, I just dropped my chocolate in there because I gave you a hug. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So shake okay, it off. Keep yes. going. Go ahead. I'm going to hold on. I'm... Get a little box or something. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> Seriously, I saw her Facebook live and I live close by so I just came over and walked in her house right so I could eat I didn't I'm even hear the door knock you did you just walked in I did because <laughs> that's how I roll <laughs> hey. I'm taking one that you already bet because I don't care you're about you're welcome you know blah, 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 blah. whatever okay continue <laughs> I'm gonna eat <laughs> all right so then I just drop it in here and just kind of pour it over and could shake off the almonds again and place it back on parchment paper Easy peasy. Oh, I can. Easy oh. peasy. Are you trying to get in or out? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide for a minute because I'm chewing. All right. So these are soft enough that I can cut them now. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Uh, if I can find the silk hat mat that I set aside for it. There we go. All right. So I just put a mat down, not because because they're still a little bit warm and a little bit sticky, and they should just pop out, just like that. And. Um, I usually use this, but it's a little dirty, so I'm going to grab my other one. Okay. This is my big one. I recommend using the small one because the big one's a little bit too big. So you can do multiple ones at once, or if you're a little nervous, you can just do one at a time. Find the, like, the one-third mark. Mmm, you need your muscles. Come on, Ashley. <laughs> Come on. I've never tried to do so many at once. <laughs> I usually only do like three at a time. Okay. Woo. Uh, look, I'm bright red from the effort. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> it's either that or I'm embarrassed. I'm not quite sure which one it is. <laughs> uh, if you wait a little bit longer and a little firmer, they might not squish so much, but you risk if you let them get too cold. You risk just breaking them and shattering them. And while that's delicious to clean up your mess, it's not quite the look that we're going for. So let's do this last one. And then, mm, <laughs> come on, there we go. <laughs> and then I recommend letting it cool completely before you dipped it. I made these earlier today or no, yesterday. I made these yeah. yesterday so they were cool enough to dip. If you dipped this now, it would probably just get super messy. Um, but yeah, so that's how I make homemade almond roca. Hopefully I get caught through every step. 
And let's see if there's any questions real fast, and then I'll let you go. Uh, in the bowl, yes. I just uh, chopped crushed onions really, really fine. Or almonds. Almonds. What did I say? Onions. <laughs> Not onions. Not onions. That's uh, for the people you hate. <laughs> Onion roca is not a thing. I just use my small food processor, um, but you can hand chop up too. If you hand chop them, I find that onions, are, now I'm on onions. Almonds fly all over the place. Um, uh, Karen says hello. Hey, you just responded. That's Jill. That's the same Jill. You just responded in the comments. Sure. Um, yes, Jen. I'll have to send you samples. That's all there is to it. Tiffany, hi. It's good to We're see bad. you. Okay, Mary Jo, you made almond roca for years with no troubles, and the last two times you made it, the butter and sugar separated. Do I know why this happened? A uh, couple things it could be. Did you move, and did your altitude change, uh, and what was the weather like when you made them? I tend to find that I get the separation problems when the barometer's changing, like right before a snowstorm, or while it's raining, or something like that, uh, and I don't have any problems as long as it's dry. Uh, humidity, kind of, uh, some days are good, some days are bad. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you cool them overnight, do you need to put them in an airtight container? Um, you can. I just left them out on my thing and put plastic wrap over the top of them. They don't need to be refrigerated or anything like that. They don't need to be totally sealed in. So I did not. Any questions over here? Uh, Marion, found you a couple weeks ago. You've been home since having neck surgery. I'm so sorry. I hope it was, you know, for a good reason and that you feel better. Um, and you're one of the reasons you've not lost your mind. That's so sweet. My favorite comment of the day. Thank She's you so also much. She's also I don't lose my mind. So we have something in common. <laughs> You're the reason I don't lose my mind. Perfect. <laughs> Jill has been one of my friends for, gosh, a few three years. Six, seven years now. I don't even before know. my baby was born, and he's six now. So. Yeah. Or so he, like, was, he was a brand new baby. He was huh? brand new, so brand six, six years. So six years. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the hair color. That's Thanks. gorgeous. I went red. Ah, you look fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rachel, you love your hair. My hair or her hair? Because we both got great Probably hair Probably her hair. <laughs> I'm wearing it. Uh, switch the camera <laughs> angle. Thank you. I'm sorry that I didn't see your note, Sarah. Hopefully I switched it and you saw what you're looking for. Uh, Elizabeth, you need to eat some? Yes, everyone needs to eat some. I'm going to make some. Uh, uh, can Just you briefly give activity. the ingredients for the candy part? <laughs> um, <yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the candy. It's uh, pretty much one part of everything. I, this size batch was uh, a cup of butter, a cup of sugar, a cup of almonds, a cup of chocolate. Uh, I use two tablespoons of corn syrup as a personal preference. I feel like it brings the candy together better. Um, I've had a lot better results. It's been like the magic ingredient for candy making for me, so I'm a huge fan, but it's totally optional. Um, so yeah, and then uh, there's a recipe on my website for the toffee recipe. Uh, the classic way, just thick toffee, but I will be doing a new post talking specifically about uh, the almond roca shape and how I do that and adding the corn syrup, uh, the corn syrup to it because I didn't use corn syrup in my previous version of this recipe. So are there any other questions before I get off? Ooh, we're just under an hour. We're doing a nice short. Karen, that's what BFFs are for. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, any other questions over here? No? All right. Uh, next week, next Wednesday, we will be going live again. I have no idea what I'll be making. So if you have uh, any requests, let me know. Uh, it'll be after Christmas, so... Something New Year's-y? Maybe something New Year's-y? Appetizer, maybe party Ooh. food. That, see, this is why she's around. I often mm -hmm. comment that she's my brain. <laughs> she finishes my sentences for me. I'm not my own brain, but I can finish her sentences. <laughs> and I'm so. not her brain either, so she's kind of at a loss. I get her. She gets I got nothing. nothing. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let me know if there's a specific appetizer that you want to see. You are welcome. So glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, where did I get them? Oh, you have a similar mold. Perfect. Then you'll be able to make these. Uh, I, I'll link to where I got these on Amazon, but like I said, a ton of stores have them. I think they're called water bottle molds because they're, for, so. they're for ice for water bottles because they fit down in there, but um, I love to use them. Uh, your mom wouldn't let anybody near you when she was making candy. I know, right? Because the second you stop watching it, it's ruined. Um, so hopefully all these tips and tricks help and you don't feel scared of making candy and you're going to try your own toffee uh, in the comments down below before i get off let me know like the one thing that you could not not go without making over the holidays some years like last year was rough and i didn't make a lot of uh a lot of treats holiday treats but i did still make my caramel brownies and my cheese ball those are like the two things that i couldn't not make 
How about you? I just eat what you make. <laughs> I have some eggnog in the fridge. Yes. <laughs> I have excellent timing. <laughs> but did you bring me my pitcher? Oh, oh snap. <laughs> I totally forgot. Every time I can't find something in my kitchen, I'm like, Jill, do you have my pan by chance? Oh, no. Most of the time, I've just put it in the wrong place. Sometimes you have it. It's not a big deal. Yeah, this um, time I have it. <laughs> sometimes she does have it. Uh, so I don't see any other questions. So I think we're good to say goodbye. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and enjoy your loved ones. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Enjoy whatever it is that you celebrate and just enjoy being away from work and school. So I will uh, see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe, follow along, hit the bell, hit the like, whatever it is so that you don't miss all of my shenanigans next week. <laughs> right? Sounds good. Yeah. No, you say something about how fab fabulous I am. Oh my gosh. Ashley. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Ashley, you are my life. <laughs> And your food all right, is all right, what? All right. <laughs> oh, you wanted me to be serious. Oh, okay. No. Like and subscribe no. and comment and all of the love. Yeah, the more food I make for you, the more she gets to enjoy. It's true. <laughs> and her husband and her kids and my kids and true. me. <laughs> all right. And, oh, now I have to remember how to turn everything off. All right. See you later. Yes, I want to stop.